Hi, this is David uh, back with you again. What I thought I'd show you today is how to sort of create that grunge effect real easily in uh, using Adobe Bridge and Adobe Photoshop. So what we have is we have this image that actually works really super well. I was just kind of playing with it and it seemed to just be one of those that just seemed to fit perfectly for it. So we're going to take this image and we're going to make some adjustments. This is typically how I would bring an image in if I you know, was just going to do it all in Photoshop. But what we can do is we can come in here and make some adjustments in here that will actually change it, the, the look and get it really close to what I was wanting to just with moving some sliders. So uh, what we'll do is we'll start just by grabbing some of these and just cranking them all the way one direction. So we're both at minus 100 for highlight and shadows. And then what we're going to do is, is bring, the, bring the blacks up, just kind of boost those back up, and then we're going to bring the whites up. And then what the, what the, where the real effect comes from is when you can't bring the clarity and crank that up, that starts getting that, that look in here for you. And that's what's really cool is it kind of adds that textury uh, sort of real textured look, the real gritty look to it. And then what, what um, typically on this shot, what I would like to do is I don't want to see too much color. So what I'd like to do is dial some of that out. So what we're going to do is just grab the vibrance and kind of pull that back a ways. And I'm not going to necessarily pull it all the I, I will typically pull it a little further when I get into Photoshop and make some final adjustments. But right off the bat, you can see where the texture on this has really changed. And um, it's really sort of given us a cool effect. So I'm going to go ahead and click Open Image here. And we have the image open in, in Photoshop now. And what we're going to do is just make some selective changes to it. I'm going to go down to the, the adjustment layers, down to the yin, little yin yang sign at the bottom of the layers palette, and click on that. And I'm going to add the brightness and contrast adjustment layer. And that adds it with a mask. So what we're going to do is actually I want to, I'm worried about this hair on top where it looks a little too hot for me. I want to be all the attention to be in here. So I want to darken this up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just grab the brightness and contrast and pull that back down and just go ahead and close that palette. And I need to switch it now because the white reveals and black conceals. So what I want to do is conceal the effect of that by hitting a command I. So now that adjustment layer is hidden under the mask. So what we need to do is open the mask up a little bit by painting in white. So what I'm going to do is, is grab the brush by hitting B is my brush tool. And what I'm going to do is just paint in here to, to, to darken that up. So I'm going to make sure my opacity is up. And then what I need to do is just come in here and kind of darken this area up. Go ahead and hit his ear there and just kind of pull the hair back a little bit. And if you want to just see the difference, you can just kind of click on that and see what's changed. And then generally what I'll do is just dial that back just a little bit. Um, and that gives us some choices. Doing adjustment layers is great because if we decide, well, I haven't taken it far enough or I've taken it too far, you can always come back in here and click the adjustment layer and it gives you the adjustment all over again. So you can make any adjustments along the way, which is really cool. Now, also, there's a little more color in here than I would normally want because I want this to be a little closer to a black and white image. So what I'm going to do is hit the adjustment layers again, go to hue saturation, and just dial the color back a little bit more. And doing this in this area in, in Photoshop, on an adjustment layer, we can then again go in here and change it again if we want to. So uh, this is kind of a little more what I was shooting for, but if I change my mind and decide I want some color back, all I do is have to hit on this image again, hit on the adjustment layer, and then just pull that saturation back up and I can bring it back if I want. So that's always an option and that's what's really cool about uh, these layers is being able to do that. Uh, I'd like to add a little more contrast and darken it up in some of the areas in the center of the photo. So I'm going to go ahead and even add another adjustment layer. I'm going to hit levels and I'm just going to bring, just sort of slide the black slider up a little bit and just kind of bring that back. And then on this, I'm going to do the same thing again where I'm going to hit a command I just to invert that layer and then just paint in the, the black or the, or the contrast where I want it. So I, I'm kind of thinking I just kind of want it centrally along the arm and things like that. I'd like to show a little more definition here, so I covered that up. So I'm going to hit the X key to toggle the colors from black to white and white to black. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the X key just to swap them. And then I can paint back here in white just to lighten the areas up that I might have hit with the other brush. And that's what's really cool about the adjustment layers is you can kind of go in there and selectively add light and dark where you like it. 
So that's kind of the image. Um, kind of gives you that gritty, textury look, which is what I was shooting for. And hopefully this helps everybody out out there. There's always some other detail work you can do on these, but that's just overall sort of gives you that really nice, gritty texture look. Uh, hopefully this is something you guys are looking for. And if there's any comments I can help you with, just don't hesitate to shoot me a comment.